My very first handheld gaming console was the Nintendo DSi. It launched on November 1st, 2008, and one year after its release, came one of the greatest games of all time, and possibly in its series. That game was part of the Mario & Luigi franchise, and is called Mario & Luigi Bowser's Inside Story. When I turned 5 years old in 2007, my parents gifted me my very own blue Nintendo DSi with its own matching blue Nerf case, which, trust me, was the shit back in the day. But most importantly, my parents also gave me a copy of Bowser's Inside Story. And little did I know it at the time, I was about to make a hell of a lot of memories playing that game. Its predecessors, and even its successors that would soon follow in its footsteps. Mario and Luigi are undoubtedly the world's most iconic tag team duo of two brothers, whom have gone on adventures by themselves, but never together. This was of course, until November 17th, 2003, when a company that went by the name of Alpha Dream released their first game in the Mario and Luigi series on the Game Boy Advance, calling it Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. Now Superstar Saga isn't your run of the mill Mario game either. Not only did it feature both Mario and Luigi working together to defeat a new, never-before-seen antagonist that goes by the name of Kakaletta, which is badass if you ask me, but it was the very first RPG Mario game of its kind. This game, and the others that were soon to follow, introduced all sorts of new features that nobody had ever seen before, such as the Customize Your Character menu where you could throw some new drip on Mario and Luigi, giving them different statistical bonuses. Although, when I was five, I didn't quite understand how this feature worked, so Mario and Luigi got to keep their base clothing, which explains why I fucking sucked at Bowser's Inside Story. But after the release of Superstar Saga, came a second game called Partners in Time. And I know I'm going to get a lot of backlash for this one, but I've never played this one, okay? I'm going to blame this one on my parents not buying it for me when I was younger. So kiss my ass, because we're skipping this one. So soon after the release of Partners in Time, Alpha Dream cooked up another fucking banger in the Mario & Luigi series and it is unquestionably my favorite. This game goes by the name of Bowser's Inside Story, and oh baby, did it blow my mind when I was five, because not only did it take place in the Mushroom Kingdom, it also took place deep inside the bowels of King Koopa himself. And this time around, you not only got to play as Mario and Luigi, you also got to play as Bowser in a Mushroom Kingdom that has been taken over with a mysterious disease, turning toads into blorbs which are essentially just toads if they lived in the United States. And with that, open up a door of opportunity for Alpha Dream, allowing them to introduce my favorite mechanic in the Mario & Luigi series, GIANT BATTLES! Whenever a giant battle was about to happen, Mario & Luigi got to shoot some funny looking orbs in a place called the Rump Command, which is kind of funny, and then Bowser became a massive beast who could take on anything, even his own fucking castle! And what I like so much about giant battles is that you got to tilt your DS 90 degrees and play it that way, which is a really nice way of changing things up. But a wise man once told me, a great game with great mechanics and a great story is only great if the ending is great. And by God, was the ending to this game great. You got to fight a dark version of Bowser on the outside and a smiley annoying black blob on the inside. And the music that plays in the background during this final fight just makes you want to get up and dance! But after you save the day, Bowser's Inside Story comes to an end. But Alpha Dream wasn't done yet! The fourth, and probably my second favorite game in the series, Mario & Luigi Dream Team, was the first Mario & Luigi game on the Nintendo 3DS. 
The story of Dream Team takes place in what is called Pillow Island and primarily focuses on Luigi. And yes, you heard me right. Luigi is the star of the show this time around. And let's just say that uh, he's been staying up late for the past few weeks trying to finish One Piece because he is exhausted. The main mechanic in this game is Luigi's ability to sleep wherever he goes, but every time he does, he opens up a portal to his dreams, where he essentially becomes God and can create an infinite amount of clones of himself. But when these clones all combine together, they form Big Daddy Luigi, who can take on obscenely large foes, just like in Bowser's Inside Story. And I was 9 years old when this game came out, and as a 9 year old, I had a blast playing this game, and the next one in the series. Alpha Dream's final game they created was called Mario & Luigi Paper Jam, and featured a crossover between Mario, Luigi, and Paper Mario. I was 12 years old at the time of this game's release, and I enjoyed playing through all of it, but it just wasn't the same as the others. The giant battles turned into papercraft battles, and those just didn't feel right compared to what came before them. There were also no new dimensions or new places to travel to in Paper Jam, and the map just felt plain with really nothing new. But before the series took a turn for the worse, what about these games made them special and perhaps my favorite game series of all time? Talking about the Mario & Luigi series, I immediately think about the soundtrack. And that's because no RPG game franchise in history has a more perfect soundtrack than the Mario & Luigi series. But before you start angrily typing in my IP address in the comment section, hear me out. Every time you enter a new room, or stage, or even a battle, you're greeted with a new song. This allows you to never get bored of listening to the same song for too long, and keeps your ears content as you play through each moment of every game. Sure, some songs are better than others, but there isn't a single song I wouldn't want to listen to while I'm on the toilet taking a shit. Besides the song that plays on Bowser Ate the Carrots, I was never able to do that part as a kid. And yes, I did have my mom do it for me. But other than that, the soundtrack in these games are perfect. But the soundtrack in these games are only as good as the story they play along with. And trust me when I say this, the story is also immaculate. The story behind the Mario & Luigi series is fantastic, and until Paper Jam, there were always brand new characters that were introduced into the series that have never been seen before. And sure, not every new character introduced was that amazing, but some of them, such as Queen Bean, I'd let her sit on my face, I, I mean sit next to me and talk about how great these games are. But anyways, in 3 out of the 5 games, Mario and Luigi fight a final boss that isn't Bowser. But when you do fight King Koopa, he's always jacked up on crack, especially in Dream Team. But not only are there new characters and bosses you get to fight, you also feel a sense of attachment to these characters and what they have to offer. Take Starlo for example. Starlo is a small yellow ball with feet who, believe me when I say this, can sometimes be annoying as hell, but somehow always gives the player a sense of happiness whenever they are on screen. But before I, and anyone else knew it, the lore, soundtrack, and every other aspect of these games was about to come to an end. On October 1st, 2019, Alpha Dream filed for bankruptcy, and the company that brought us so much joy and happiness was gone. Just like that. The only thing we have left to remember them by are the five games they left in their wake, and the memories they gave us along the way. And unless Nintendo decides to carry on what Alpha Dream left off, there will be no more Mario & Luigi games to give the kids who are now five years old, just like I was when I played my first Alpha Dream game, the same memories that I was given. Just a bunch of poor remasters that just don't feel the same as the originals. And with that being said, thank you Alpha Dream, and farewell, Mario and Luigi.